Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and this is SketchUp Square One, where we take a deep dive into everything that is SketchUp. Today we're going to take a look at the Entity Info window. So, the Entity Info window will show you information about a currently selected thing. If it's an edge, or a face, or a group, or component. But it will also give you some controls. You can change how that thing is displayed in SketchUp, and even add a little bit of data. Let's go ahead and take a look right now. Okay, so start with, I've got some, some things, some stuff here inside of uh, SketchUp that we're going to take a look at. So the first thing, I'm going to go ahead and pick on this edge, and we'll see this edge show up information right here. When I pick an edge, it shows what tag it's under, so I can actually change that if I want to group some things together. It is raw geometry, so I usually want to leave that on untagged. I don't want to put that onto a tag until it goes into a group or component. Best workflow there. Um, but I can see when I have an edge selected, it does show me what the exact length of that edge is. Because it's an edge, I have the ability to soften or smooth it as well. I can also toggle on visibility. So you can see I'm turning it on and off. It's showing up as a dotted line here because under view I do have hidden geometry turned on, which means I can view and interact with hidden geometry. So if I have it highlighted, I can toggle it back on here. And then I also have the ability to toggle whether or not this edge casts a shadow. Now normally edges don't cast shadows because in the real world, where shadows exist and they're created, edges aren't a thing. If you look at something around you, it's not created by edges, it's created by a set of faces. Um, faces normally cast shadows inside of SketchUp and edges don't, but you do have the option to turn it on. So if you have an edge representing something like something small, a wire or something like that, maybe a piece of fence, uh, you can turn on cast shadow for edges if you want to. If I have multiple edges turned on, so I'm going to go ahead and hold down shift and pick a couple of these other edges, you'll see as I do that, the length grows. So this is now not the length of one of these pieces. This is the actual cumulative length of all the edges selected. You see it's grayed out right now. It's grayed out because when I have one edge, I can actually come in here and overwrite this, right? So I come in here and say, I want this to be 10 foot, enter, and it'll get longer. If I have multiple edges selected, I can't really tell it, well, how big do I want that to be? Because I, there's, I don't know what piece it would add it to, or anything like that. So it will show the cumulative length of all edges selected, but not let you change it. But I can toggle everything else. I can toggle it visible. I can soften and smooth. I can do all of that while they're selected. If I have a face highlighted, I'm going to pick a face, not double click. I don't want the edges and the face, just the face. So while I have that selected, here's what I can see. What tag, the total area of that face. And then again, I can toggle visibility. I can also toggle whether or not this face receives shadows as well as whether or not it casts shadows. We'll come back to casting and receiving in just a few minutes once we've gone through some of the basic stuff here. You'll see that I have two faces here. I do have the ability to set the material for the front, which is white, and the back, which is this gray color. You can see both of them, both front and back faces are the same. This is a two-sided material. Um, that's already happening that way. If I select the edge, to back up real quick, you will see that there is a material here for the edge. Depending on the style that I have high selected, I can actually add color to edges. In this case, I don't. I, all my edges are set to color the same. But I can set a value here, so I could change this to red, and then if I change my style to show edge color, it will switch from the default black to red. All right, moving on. Right here, we have a whole bunch of things. So one thing I could show is if we select multiple faces, it is going to show me the cumulative area of all the faces, just like selecting multiple edges showed me the cumulative length. If I triple click this box and grab all the pieces, see this is just loose geometry. These things over here are actually containers. This is just loose geometry. But as soon as I select more than one entity type, so in this case I have edges and faces turned on, it stops telling me what they are and it just says you have these entities selected. Likewise, my information and what I can change goes down because only what I can control for all the selected entities is available. In this case, it is tag and whether or not it's visible. All right, let's keep going. All right, here's where it starts to get fun. Let's talk about groups. So this is a group. Um, 
in this case, I can see, I again have tag, which this is where you should start using tags is put everything that's in a group should be on a tag. Um, I can also add an instance. So right now this is called second box. I can use type here to change a classification. So if I do want to use classifications here, I can actually import a classification scheme and add it to the group. Um, I also see volume. Because this is a closed group, this is a solid group, this is manifold geometry, uh, it will give me the total volume of this group. If I come in here, if I double click in here, once I get in here, you know, empty info works just like it did on the outside. But if I go ahead and delete this face, now this is no longer a solid group. In fact, it's going to tell me if I pick on it, it's just a group. So I don't have that volume there. I'm going to go ahead and click back in here. Draw an edge here to close that face again. And now it'll say it is a solid group again. It will again give me my volume. One of the things I'll see in components and groups is this lock feature. If I click on lock and I lock this, uh, one thing is everything grays out in NT info, but also I can't mess with this group once I come out here. So if I go like grab eraser and try to drag it over here, it's not going to get erased. If I grab move and I click, I, I actually can't click on it. It won't let me pick it. See that little anti logo there below my move cursor. Um, once an item is locked, you can't interact with it. This is a great tool if you have set of geometry or maybe a reference image that you don't want to move. Um, I know in this case, it's pretty easy to just say, well, just don't move it. But what ha ends up happening sometimes is you'll be zoomed way in like this and do a select and accidentally grab the geometry underneath there and shift it over. Or maybe this will be on the back of a model and I'll accidentally select it and move it, something like that. Locking geometry prevents you from accidentally doing it. And unlocking it is as simple as selecting it and toggling it right there. All right, so components. Components work similar to groups. Um, whoops, I misspelled fourth here. Put an F on there. Uh, the same information's here, tagged, instance, but I have this one thing that's different, which is definition. So a definition is what this component is called. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna grab this one and this one. I'm gonna use move with option to make a copy of both of them. So if I pick these two, see they're both the same thing right now. They're both second box. Uh, so I'm gonna change this one to third. And if I click back and forth between these is second box and third box. If I come here and I click this component, so this is called box, which is the name of the definition, and the instance is fourth. This one is also box, but I'm going to call the instance fifth. So you can see the way this works. Even though they're separate instances, they exist as two separate things, they're linked to the same component, and that component is box. So that's the big difference with the data that I see here between groups and components. The other thing is components get this little drop down. If I click this drop down, I'll see a bunch of data that I can attribute to this component. So I can come in here, I can put a price, a size, a URL, owner, status, or here, like I saw in group, is my type, which I can use to add a classification scheme to. This data can then be pulled using generate report under file. So that is all the information that I can actually put in there. I did say we'd come back and talk a little bit more about shadows. I just want to show this real quick. I'm going to go to shadow settings and turn on shadows. And there we can see shadows happening. So the first thing, so if I grab this group right here and I'm going to turn cast shadow off. So you can see right now this shadow hits here, it hits here, it hits here. If I turn cast shadow off, no longer has that shadow fall on anything. So kind of a unique way to get, get uh, imagery out of SketchUp is you can play with this shadow setting. The other thing is receive shadow. So if I pick this piece right here and see right now, this block right here, this block right here, both cast shadows on there. I could turn off receives shadows and this still casts a shadow, but it doesn't receive them. This is kind of a cool setting because this allows you to grab geometry and make it stand out. So even though everything else is getting shadows on it, I could have this one piece that is standing apart and not getting any shadows like everything else is. 
kind of adds, you know, makes it, like I said, stand out a little bit if, if uh, it's the only one like that. Okay, so that is everything I can think to show you about Entity Info. Entity Info is a great tool. In fact, of all the windows over here that we have popped up, Entity Info is usually the one that I keep open as I model. The other ones I pop open as I need them. So if I'm working on scenes, I'll have scenes open. Um, if I'm softening, smoothing something, I can do that. I'll use that that UI. But uh, Entity Info is almost always open. There's probably some use cases. There's probably some examples that I didn't hit there, but I tried to give a general overview of everything. If I miss something, let me know down in the comments. And if you liked that video click like, and if you don't already, please subscribe. We create several videos each and every week, and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, like I said, please leave a comment down below. How do you use Entity Info? Did I miss a step? We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.